Hello folks, this is a relatively short video segment that I'm preparing uh, to let people know that if you know Katia and you have it and you want to solve a relatively uh, simple beam bending problem uh, how to use Katia to quickly get the center of uh, uh, centroid of the cross section and the moment of inertia about the uh, neutral axis. Now, <clears throat> uh, these are not hard problems to do, except that they become very tedious and we're subject very, very prone to numerical error when you do it with hand calculations. There are some specialized packages, uh, online, online programs, for example, that you can actually go ahead and uh, 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 crunch out the numbers that you need uh, once you specify the dimension of the cross section, etc. But if your cross section is not in the, in the library of those programs or you cannot find it in the table, then obviously you have no choice but to work it out manually. Here are some examples of, uh, and uh, the specific problem that I want to do is going to be this channel, uh, which, is come, which is a problem from Hebler's book because the dimensions are given here. So I'm going to create this cross section for you and then we ask it here to calculate the location of the uh, centroid and the uh, cross-sectional moment of area and, and compare it with the hand calculation which is over here. Now, the other thing I was going to tell you is that I'm going to concentrate on symmetric beams, beams have a, which are uh, <coughs> bending, but there is a vertical plane of symmetry, okay? Because uh, if, you, if you, your, your beam is not symmetrically bending, then there are uh, cross terms uh, or uh, called product of inertias that have to be worked out. And you can do, you can, you can also do that with Katia, but we're not going to worry about that uh, in this video segment. Okay. So let me go ahead and uh, make that cross section. Uh, where's Katia? Right there. So see on a convenient plane on, uh, for example, the uh, vertical plane, I will sketch. I'll sketch that cross section for you and dimension it accordingly, although it doesn't have to be you know, nice and centered, but I'm going to uh, to minimize my job. I'm going to draw it so that uh, basically I can uh, see uh, so the, 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 the cross section starts at the horizontal axis, okay? Okay, so let me uh, make the cross section. We're going to clean it up in a minute. It's that C channel. We just have to put some dimensions on it and uh, get down to business. Okay, first let me make it symmetric. This line, control that line, control the middle axis, make it symmetric. <coughs> okay, this line, control, uh, control that line, control the middle axis, also symmetric. Okay, now we're gonna put some dimensions here uh, I believe these were 30 millimeters. This is 30 millimeters. Uh, the thickness here to there is also 30 millimeters. Okay, let me see now. Uh, 30, 30, and then the height is 150, and the width is uh, 2, 250. Okay. So this height is 150. And the width, which means from here to there, it's 250. I think this is uh, the dimension that I wanted. Exit. Now, at this point, we have two choices. Let me put it in the isometric view. At this point, you have two choices. One is to pad this. You go to part design and pad it. Or you can put a surface through that. Okay, so we're in, uh, we are in uh, uh, generative shape design, or wireframe and surface design, same thing. We have the option of filling this right there. Okay, uh, just to make my job easier, I'm going to hide the sketch. But there's the surface. Now, I could have padded it, and the, the properties that we're going to get are going to be exactly the same, except that I'll use this. Now, 
<clears throat> I don't have to put any material on this thing because we're talking about second moment of area and centroid, and those are independent of the material properties. Okay. So uh, let me see. Here we have a. You see right there. It says measure inertia. You click on it, and there are two tabs here. One is for 3D 3D measurement. The other one is 2D. Obviously, we have a two-dimensional problem, so you click on it, and then you go and select this. And let's put it in the front view so that we can see it better, right there. Okay, so what have we got here? We have area of this thing is that many millimeters squared. The location of the centroid, it says center of gravity, but that's what that's what it is, centroid, okay, is uh, x of zero because it sits in the y-z plane. This thing sits in the y-z plane, obviously x is zero. And because of the symmetry, because of the fact that I drew it symmetrically, y is zero, because the central is on that vertical line, and that vertical line corresponds to y equal to zero. And the height, in other words, from the bottom to that red line, central height is this location where the two lines intersect. See that? Uh, the two lines intersect. And the, the height, the, the distance from the bottom, all the way to that location is 102. If we go back to Hebler's calculation, that's exactly what this thing is. This gives you the height from the top. If you subtract 150 millimeter from that many meters, which means 150 millimeters minus 47.7 millimeter, you get exactly 102.73. Now, over here, I have... Uh, uh, I have the uh, moment of uh, second moment of area with respect to the x-axis. X-axis is this, and that's exactly what the neutral axis is. It goes through G and uh, it goes through the mass uh, or centroid, and uh, uh, it's uh, perpendicular to the direction of application, application of the load. And look at what it says. It says it is uh, uh, 3.2 e to the minus 5 meter to the 4. So that's it. That's exactly what this number is. Okay. 3.216 e to the minus 5. That's what this thing is. Okay. And that is the same number. Now, the moment you suspect to y, I don't need it. But if you want it, it's going to be this number. And this is the, uh, this is the, uh, what is called the, uh, uh, product of inertia, okay, uh, and for a symmetric beam, this must be zero, and it is zero. Look, it's something times the 10 to the minus 36, okay, it is zero. Now, these two, these two are the uh, the uh, principal mom, uh, uh, principal second uh, moment of area, okay, but but because these are principal directions. Y is a principal direction because uh, um, this vertical, because there's a plane of symmetry here, and uh, Z axis uh, or X axis is a plane is, is a principal direction also. So what I'm saying is that these two numbers, these two numbers are identical with these two numbers because these are actually principal directions. Now, uh, you might say, okay, well, this is fine, but uh, I, I could have done this thing manually. You're, you're absolutely right. However, let, let me go here. Let me take this thing out. Let me take, delete this, and for example, make a a different type of cross section. So we go from here to here, and from here to here. Oh. And uh, where is that? Uh, let me let me draw another line for you. From there to there. Let, let me make it symmetric now. So this point, control uh, that point, control the middle axis. Let's make it symmetric. Okay, good. So if I want to do this thing manually, there's going to be more work because you have to take this and break it down into triangles and rectangles, etc. But we exit. There we are. And you click on the... Uh, measurement of inertia, measure inertia, make sure the box on the right is checked, 2D, 
and select the, the plane and there we are. So these are, uh, the area has changed obviously, the location of mass center has changed or centroid has changed, it's gone uh, obviously higher, you can see that from 102 to 125, but, but these are calculated as you expect them and therefore you can easily change these things, okay? Uh, as I said, if you have CATIA and if you do these kind of problems, then uh, you need uh, location of center of mass and moment of inertia, actually second moment of area, and uh, this is a fast way of getting it. I hope this was useful.